the harmonies. Ah! <laughs> Just blown away in every way. It's fucking beautiful. <laughs> I'm sobbing. <laughs> You're the greatest thing we've ever lost. <laughs> God. I've cried so much. <laughs> it's just wonderful. Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Lucent. I'm a singer, songwriter, music producer, and a podcaster as of this week. I don't know when this video is going to be going out on YouTube. And today I'm going to be reacting to Noah Khan's Stick Season Forever. So let's go. Cool. Okay, so just to clarify, today I will be reacting to all the bonus tracks. So that's like eight tracks, including the brand new one. I will also be reacting to all of the duets. So all of that back half of the album. I've already reacted to the base six stick season album. So if you haven't yet seen my reaction, I will leave a link for you and then come back and watch this one afterwards. So no, I can't literally like I hadn't heard anything. Oh, I'd heard a couple of songs on Patreon. But other than that, I hadn't heard anything from this guy. And he seems to be taking over the world at the moment. I absolutely adore Stick Season. I have had it on repeat. If you've been seeing my little like community posts on that I put on YouTube, he was nine of my top 10 play songs in January. And he's probably going to be very high up in February as well, given how much I've been listening to. Like, I feel like it's the kind of album that like, I just enjoy more and more and more, the more I get to know the songs. But obviously I've been holding off on the duets and the bonus tracks because I want to react to them for you. Um, but yeah, you like you've said that there are some amazing ones. So yeah, I'm totally, I'm really excited. Something that people have really been getting into on the channel is leaving their top fives. I love going through all your top fives. It's great. It's my like Monday morning with a coffee activity. Um, <laughs> but yes, for this one, rather than just the bonus tracks, I want you to list your top five from the entire Stick Season epic, whether that's duets, whether that's the bass album, whether that's the bonus songs, I want to see your top fives for all the content that's come out so far. <laughs> a few little bits. If you are new to the channel, then make sure to subscribe. If you are not new to the channel and you want to support me further and watch this video with no edits and any of the songs or anything, then you can do so over on Patreon. I'll leave the link for you in the description. And if you want even more content from me, I am launching a podcast. Potentially the first episode might already be out. It depends on the scheduling. It's called Criminally Underrated. I get a different guest on every single week and we discuss the most underrated songs from your favorite artists. I've got two YouTubers, fellow reactors on the podcast. So you have to let me know who you think is featuring um, in the comments. <laughs> right, <laughs> let's jump into it. So stick season forever. So the first one we're going to do, we're going to start with the bonus tracks and then do the duets after that. Um, so the first one is your needs, my needs. Let's go. Gorgeous guitar. Oh, lovely guitar. Oh, well, who is I? Who is I to watch you? Wow. Well, oh. You ain't oh. gotta chase the outlines of your dreams. Oh. my pain that I am in. God, the tenderness in this. Be there this time. Wow. You were a work of art, the hardest part. Like in the this is not what I was expecting. Oh. I'm naming the stars in the sky after you. <laughs> hardest part. Oh, the chords are just like, oh, so liltingly beautiful. She I love all the different places Bit it's going as well. Like always strong. Ah. Subtle change. Shorter days. Fucking hell. Uh. Oh. Ah. This is so good. Oh my god. Try and flow. See if. God. She, she goes. Fucking hell. Oh my god, the power in that, the dynamics, the oh my 
fucking god oh my god at every single point i was like not ready for like what was going to come next that was just insane like it just felt like it really lulls you into a full sense of security and then just like at different points just completely plays with you and just pulls you along this like heart-wrenching like kind of eagerly romantic thing where it's like so tender but then so huge at moments and then like right by down to like nothing again it's just like it's a fucking roller coaster it's just amazing <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's that like combination for me of like the really soft tender moments like the way he's playing the acoustic guitar and then taking it to a place that's like so jagged and raw and like so clearly so passionately like upsetting within him do you know what i mean like you can hear the emotion all over his voice it's like the combination of those two things that is just so astonishing because it's like it takes you in like it lulls you into a full sense of security with the kind of quiet intimate moments and then just smashes you around the face with the true kind of power of his emotion oh my god that i, I had so many comments on the last video saying i was gonna like this one and call your mom as well and <sighs> fucking amazing oh i thought the bass album was good and it's just like he just is taking it to a new place it's like oh well who was i who was i to watch you wilt oh, oh. oh my god you ain't gotta tell me what it means trace the outline of your dreams you'll always be a flower on my skin and the pain that i'm in it's all the same the losing touch the waiting game oh my god that lyricism Jeez, like this, it's like this idea, the reference to the flower. It's almost like a maybe he has a flower as a tattoo and it reminds him of somebody. Like, who was I to watch you will? Who was I to like sit around and like wait for like this relationship to die slowly, you know? Across that county line, I promise to be there this time. All right, you're a work of art. That's the hardest part. Howling like dogs in the light of the moon, holding our breath after one, three, two. You asked me why I wasn't saying a word. I'm naming the stars. <laughs> I was a work of art. That's the hardest part. To spiral out, to try and float, to see a friend, to see a ghost, bitter brand, brained, always drunk, rail thin. Your life, your dreams, your mind, your needs and my needs, your needs and my needs. I spiral out, try and float. You see a friend, see a ghost. <laughs> that's like fucking hell that's like i'm gonna guess that this is a friend that he's like been quite close to and is seeing them kind of go like spiral down the drain in terms of their mental health mental health in terms of their addiction and like rather than being there for them he's had to kind of leave and he's like so maybe this is like after, you know, all this kind of like, do I leave my hometown? Can I leave my hometown? Can I truly ever leave my hometown behind? Here he's like, I couldn't sit around and watch you fade away as much as I tried to detach myself from you. Like I can't really, you know, because it's so sad seeing you kind of fall into this. God, it really struck me because like, like I had a friend when I was a teenager and we were really close and we fell out. There was like a big drama and it was like really hurtful, like what went down. But she's like had loads of struggles with mental health, with eating disorders and stuff. And like, and I always felt kind of, you know, a bit of guilt that like I couldn't be there for her. And it just really struck me there, like how these friends from your hometown, like your relationships change and you can't necessarily control that because your lives change, you know, but that still doesn't stop you from feeling it, you know, God fucking incredible just phenomenal what we're supposed to do with that oh god okay next song this is dial drunk i'm remembering okay my okay we're going to do a bit more of a country vibe here it's nice oh my i used to be say this fucking guy <laughs> I just can't cope. Emergency phone call, honey. Yeah. I drunk, I'll die for you. Even within the kind of like upbeat moments, he manages to have so much like pathos and like just like emotional kind of depth, you know, like in his voice, his voice and his melodies are just gorgeous. And so surprising. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is fucking great. 
Geld. Oh mein Gott. Oh, love it. <lacht> Ja, right. <laughs> oh, God, it's just like, just that he pinpoints that feeling, doesn't he? Like, oh, fucking fabulous. Like, just to kind of have that feeling of like your commitment to the people that you love and you care about when you're that age, those people that you grew up with, you know. And like, he's saying, like, I would, you know, I would die for you, but also like, but it's, oh my God, that just, oh my God, it's just so much about it. I just love, he like pinpoints that character, that person who is, we all have them in our lives who kind of get drunk and get into a fight over somebody else. But like, rather than just like, that being the kind of veneer of it, he reveals underneath like what that person truly is going through. And it gives you so much kind of empathy for the, for those, for those people who we all know, you know, for the shame of being young and lonely and drunk, you know, like that's the kind of, that's the feeling of the shame, the internal shame, the internal sadness and loneliness, you know, that's kind of what's pushing that into that place, you know? And it's like, yeah, oh my God, it's just wonderful. Like he manages to do something that could like seem frothy and upbeat. Many people would do an upbeat song like the your country with the diddle and the fiddles and everything. It could be very pastiche. It could be very shallow. It's not at all. It's got so much depth to it and it just completely sells it, you know? Like, it's fabulous. It's absolutely incredible. I'm the first person to criticise country if you've seen many of my videos, you know. It's, but this is the way he has a certain nostalgia, you know, and he brings that with the kind of country style music. It brings the nostalgia and that is what the music was all about. It's about this kind of link to your hometown, you know, taking your emotion there to those people that you knew when you were there. So having country as part of that sound is really important, I think. I'm remembering I promised to forget you now and it's raining and I'm calling drunk. My medicine is drowning your perspective out so I ain't taking any fault. Proud of all the punches that I've thrown in the name of someone I no longer know. For the shame of being young, drunk and alone. Traffic lights and the transmitter radio. I gave your name as my emergency phone call. Honey, it rang and rang. Even the cops thought you were wrong for hanging up. I'll die drunk, I'll die. A drunk, I'll die for you. Fuck. It's like that kind of like drunken thought in that moment. You're like, I would die for you. Obviously, it's like an ex, somebody who he used to love, who he used to be with, going through a thing where he gets arrested for like starting a fight while he's drunk. And she's the emergency contact and she hangs up on him. She's like, no. Oh my God, there's so much in that story. It's just like so, oh my God. I'm untethering the parts of you, me you'd recognize from charming to alarming in seconds. I'll be bedridden. Beg you, sir. Just let me call, I'll give you my blood alcohol. I'll rot with all the burnouts in the cell. I'll change my faith, I'll praise the flag. Let's wait, I swear she'll call me back. I love the little reference there as well to, to the other song. I just love the story in it. It links to this hometown feeling, it links to the old relationship that he's now no longer part of but can't quite let go of. It's just everything about that, I just adore. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that I've spent the whole video crying so far. Okay, next song. <laughs> this is Paul Revere. Ooh, hello. Oh, there's so much, like, that kind of dark, raspy feeling just instantly creates atmosphere. They apart the mountains and nothing was the same. But it just ain't that simple. We'll drink to New Year's and they'll leave me to clean up. Wow, yeah. Cut it clear. Yeah. Paul Revere in a wind. I just adore his melodies, like from around here. Yeah. Wow. Oh. I'll leave for the road cruise out until it ends that I'm not ready to let go yet. Yeah. I love the way that this is building up. It's just like throwing in extra little violins and stuff. I did it. <laughs> wow. From around here. Gorgeous. But the patch of grass where we buried the dog. Oh, and yeah, the died the dead dog. Oh my god. If I could leave, I would have already left. Uh, so he's moved on, but he still can't move on. 
you know. Yeah. Wow. God, the atmosphere in this song, the darkness within it, like all those little twilly bits, like, oh, so like beautifully, intelligently put together that song. Like it just, he's just, it's so surprising to me the way that he uses his melodies to really surprise you moment to moment, but also the structure of the song. Like that one really didn't follow a typical structure. Like it really kind of just flowed, you know, the dynamics of the song, the, the atmosphere and the way it slowly built up and had lots of little details. It was just so expertly put together. It feels like these deluxe tracks so far have been like such a step up. It's almost like the bass album, although I mean, absolutely brilliant, beautiful and stunning. Between that and doing the deluxe tracks, it feels like he's really developed his skill and his artistry to like the next level. It's really, really beautiful. Also, I'm loving this idea that like, as much as he feels like he needs to get away, as much as he feels like he needs to change, and it seems like there's lots of moments where he feels like he maybe does, maybe physically move away, but there's always this like return to like, can I ever truly get away from the stick season? Can I ever truly get away from my hometown? Even if I move halfway across the world, my heart, my mind, my thoughts, my family, my friends, they're still going to be there. And so maybe there's a sense of like, he's going to need to find like some way to like deal with that. You know, county line, I'm coming down, mailboxes until my house. It seems like maybe he's moved like a town away potentially, but he's still coming back. Yes, the boys are drunk, the sun is high, their license plates, live free or die. But it ain't just that simple, it never was. We drink till New Year's, then they'll leave me to clean up. So there's a sense of like nostalgia, like he's going back through his old neighborhood and kind of looking back and seeing all the kind of beauty that was there. But he has to remind himself everything was actually like... We need to remind himself of the bad stuff too, you know. One day I'm going to kite clear, ride like Paul Revere. I'm going to guess it's a cowboy or something. And when they ask me who I am, I'll say I'm not from around here. I'll leave before the road crews out, before those joggers looking way too proud. So in the middle of the night, in the early morning, and I'll turn up the music and I'll forget until it ends that I'm not ready to let go yet. So he's still kind of like got one foot in, one foot out. And he's saying in the, there will come a time when I can actually just cut loose. I'm in my car and so nap back to now. I see the yard, the patch of grass with the, where we buried the dog and the world makes sense behind a chain link fence. If I could leave, I would have already left. He's still got this one foot out. And I think he reveals at this moment that he's not there yet. Maybe in the future, he'll find a time where he can truly cut loose, and ride off. But at this point, he's still connected you know he still can't take himself emotionally away from this place you know ah <laughs> it's just so amazing like i love the whole concept of it like how the main album seems to be like he's still within that moment he's still living in that difficult time you know the period of depression and going to see a therapist and all this kind of stuff and now in these songs after the fact he's looking back but still not quite free of it it's just like so well thought out it's so good okay <laughs> Let's go on to the next one. This is No Complaints. Okay. Ooh, uh, gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous. Thought I had something And that's the same as having something mm, Thought I was raised better Tried to fake better Tried to blame where the weight of the world Ain't so bad I love the kind of like slow kind of lilting kind of dragging your feet feeling of the tempo of this song. Wonderful. All these songs are just so beautifully put together like still exist just escapes different one interesting melody as well like he really is so creative with the way he uses his voice and like uses very very different melodical structures in every song you know who am i to complain ugh <laughs> oh, the, oh, I love those strings. There's something about the combination of like acoustic guitar and strings that just really just gets me. Wow, I forgot how to cry. Who am I to complain? Christ, 
I've got no complaints because I don't feel anything. <laughs> Mad. Fucking beautiful. I just adore, like, how slow that was and how it felt like, like, it really felt like the sound of it was somebody dragging their feet, walking along like a zombie. You know, like he said, he fills his head with prescription medication and maybe, like, it's numbing the anxiety, but maybe numbing his other emotions. And so he kind of feels like he's just dragging his feet. That is the sound of that song is that somebody's dragging their feet through life and not really connecting. And it's like, I've got no complaints, you know, but I'm not actually truly feeling anything. And this song sounds like it. The way that the drums are slightly behind the beat, the slow tempo, the way the strings kind of go like this. There's moments of like... Dun, dun, and then it kind of goes back to it, you know? It's like somebody who's trying to break free of it, but isn't, you know? And it's just so expert. It's just so, so well done. You were right about these bonus songs. Like, completely right about these bonus songs. Like, <laughs> I'm obsessed. I thought I had something that's the same as... Wait, I thought I had something. And that's the same as having something. Oh, I see. I get mad at nothing. Blame my dad for something. I thought I was raised better. Tried to fake better. Tried to blame weather and escape better. It's kind of almost like a kind of slightly more like rap cadence in a way. Not quite any, not quite over like towards that stylistically, but like the kind of flow of it, you know. I saw the end, it looks just like the middle. I've got a paper and pen and a page with no space. I filled the hole in my head with prescription medication and forgot how to cry. Who am I to complain? Yeah. The pain's different. It still exists, just escapes different. And evades vision, makes the rain different, makes the news boring and my rage distant. Yes, I'm young and living dreams in love with being noticed and afraid of being seen. Wow. In love with being noticed and afraid of being seen. It's like, I want you to notice me. I want you to care about me, but I don't want you to actually get too close to me. Fuck. I forgot to cry. Who am I to complain? Fucking hell. It's just like so expertly written. Like there's just so many levels to that. It just works so beautifully because it's like he tells the story of how he was kind of emotionally up and down, was having fights with people, like couldn't hold back. And so went somewhere to try and get help. And it seems like it is helping. But the other side of it is that if he's going to continue to rely on the medication, then he's going to continue to live like this kind of zombie-like existence. And actually, the pain is still there. He's not actually dealing with it. It's like, obviously, like medication can help so many people. And I do believe in like in anxiety medication and stuff to help people get back to who they used to be, you know. But there is a feeling that if you become kind of stuck on it if you continue using it you're not actually kind of solving the issue it's almost like a like a like a kind of short term band-aid plaster as we'd say um to the solution and i think that's kind of what he's saying towards the end is that like the pain is still there it's just distant it just comes out differently and now everything just feels different and i don't feel normal anymore it's like what's worse you, you know yeah it's so so beautifully done to, and that, that kind of central kind of thing I've got no complaints, but there's such hidden depth within just that phrase. You know, to have no complaints is fine, but also you're not living life. I can't say anything wrong about it because there's nothing wrong about it. But, but, there's a but, <laughs> you know, uh, so, so good. Okay, let's go on to the next one. This is Call Your Mum. Oh, you spy, but then again, you get the chance to never make them let it out and let it in. Falsetto is so gorgeous. Call your mom. Oh, that's such a beautiful little sentiment, you know? I've been exactly where you are. Oh, okay, so it's like sympathy, like uh, empathy for somebody. I've been where you are. Call your mom. That's gorgeous. What a gorgeous sentiment. And to be at a place now within his emotional journey where he can kind of say, I've been where you've been. I will call your mum to check in on you, to check that you're okay. It's great if you could see yourself like this. Mm. You'd have never tried it. Yeah, well. You had to go. Wow. So it's a song to somebody who's like really on the edge. Fuck. I would drive all night and I'll call your mum to check that you're alright, you know. Don't be discouraged <laughs> That's, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Ah. Fall in love, give 
yourself a reason Find a reason Oh my god It's like do anything Like I do need to find something I don't want to keep driving around Thinking in the back of my head Are you still going to be there? You know? <laughs> yeah Tuh. Gorgeous. Oh my god. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> wow. I love the powerful version of that final chorus. It's really great. Oh wow. Gore. Fucking hell. <laughs> that have this wow. <laughs> heavy shit right like I just love the kind of like having followed the progression of the whole album and like seen where he's been you know like I've followed his emotional journey through these like heavy moments you know like during growing sideways and during like the view between villages and like these moments like when he's getting angry and the death of the dog and he can't forget all these things <laughs> well and then you know his ability like and the fact that he's gone to therapy the fact that he's like on anti-anxiety stuff and it's like you know that he's been through it, through, like, getting to know him through this album. And so to kind of hear him, like, get to a point where, like, he can see somebody else who is in that position. I don't think he necessarily realises it in this moment, but he has come so far because he can say, I will, like, drive all night to be there for you. And th that's the kind of point of healing. Because when you're in the depths of depression, it's a very selfish place. You know, you can't. It's, it's like you can't see anybody else. Like you're completely absorbed by it. And he knows that and he has empathy and he has sympathy. And the fact that he is driving all night and calling this person's mum to see if they're all right shows that he's no longer in that place. You know, he doesn't state it outright, but you get that feeling that he's no longer in that kind of like all encompassing depression, you know, whereas like earlier when you like listen to Orange Juice, he totally is in that place because in Orange Juice, he has somebody coming over to his house and he doesn't even know that they've given up alcohol or anything. He's like so totally self-absorbed still in that moment that like he's not even thinking about them at the party. You know, we've got Orange Juice for the kids, you know, so it's beautiful to hear his progression, you know. Oh, God, it's just wonderful. That's just, oh, God, this is so, this is why I love music. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, you're spiralling again the moment right before it ends. Don't you cancel any plans because I won't let you get the chance to never make them. Fuck. Stayed on the line with you the entire night till you let it out and let it in. Yeah, to be able to be there for this person. Don't let the darkness fool you. All the lights turned off can be turned on so you can make it back. You can come back. I'll drive all night. I'll call your mum. Waiting room, no place to stand. His gracious fears and wringing hands and the loudest silence. If you could see yourself like this, if you could see yourself like this, you'd have never tried it. Oh my God, it's got to be like, oh my God. So someone's obviously like harmed themselves in a way and is now, they're in the hospital. Like he's with the parents potentially, I guess. Yeah. Medicate, meditate, sway your soul to Jesus, throw a punch, fall in love, give yourself a reason. I don't want to drive another mile wondering if you're breathing. So won't you stay, won't you stay with me? He's just like, you need to find something. I don't care whether it's like, you know, religion or yoga or, you know, like anything, anything. You just need to give yourself a reason to live. You need to find a reason to live. It's just a hobby. You know, it's like something. You need to find that and use that to get better. So there's a knowledge here. There's a knowledge that he knows that like what needs to be done in order to get better, to take yourself back from the depths of depression, you know? And it's so wonderful to see that progression. Oh God, it's just so good. Just wonderful. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay, next one. This is You're Gonna Go Far. I saw your destination as a deadline It's a conversation, all the grammar on a spray paint And I even gave up driving after night in the sound mind No when things get hard Every single time the melody sounds beautiful It does another thing It makes me go well Greatest thing we've lost Birds still sing. <laughs> so that's like the parents, I think. Oh my god. Somebody who's moving away and it's like, we'll still be here. 
you know, <laughs> you're the greatest thing we've ever lost. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just love saying life will go on uh, and we'll support you from the sidelines. It's just, it's like the thing he's always needed to hear, you know? Yeah. <laughs> God, what a perfect, perfect song to have at this point, you know? Yeah. Well, those drums sound great, don't they? Fabulous. Oh my God. Just obsessed. Like, just what a perfect song to have at this point. Like, literally, just everything that I was saying about like getting to know him and getting to like understand this, this person who's f been through so much and like living, like trying to escape his hometown, this like depression, the kind of small town thing, and like wanting to get out, never quite being able to make it, like having one foot in, one foot out. Does he turn around? Like, there were moments where like it seemed like he made it out, but then he ended up back there, you know, getting to this point where he can. He realizes that maybe he's out of this depression and he can actually do something, you know, he can actually take it somewhere now. And then here we go. We've got the people like saying goodbye, you know, and like the family and the friends saying, You're gonna go far. We support you. We are there. Like, you're the greatest thing we've ever lost. It's just it's really gorgeous. And there's just so much in that, you know, like, oh. It's just wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, we, we're cheering you on, you know. I've cried so much. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. The only time I got to pray for a red light was when I saw your destination as a deadline. This is normal conversation, babe. It's all fine. Making quiet calculations where the fault lies. The college kids are getting so young, aren't they? It's growing up, moving on. <laughs> They're correcting all the grammar on, on spray paint. <laughs> it takes a strong hand in the sound mind. It makes me smile to know when things get hard. Oh, you'll be far. You'll be far from here. I wonder whether it's him, his perspective, or like his father or something. Like, I don't know. Or like, maybe he is like saying it's somebody else. I don't know. The perspective I'm not sure on, but like the sentiment is there, you know, getting older, moving on. It's that 30s thing where you start realizing like, oh yeah, I'm going to you know, settle a little bit, you know, <laughs> chill out a little bit. So pack up your car, put a hand on your heart, say whatever you feel, be wherever you are. We ain't angry at you, love. You're the greatest thing we've lost. I can't say that live without crying. Um, the birds will still sing. Your folks will still fight. The birds will still creep. The leaves will still die. We ain't angry at you, love. We'll be waiting for you, love. And we'll all be here forever. We're overdue a revival. We spent so long getting by. That's the thing about survival. Who the hell likes living just to die? It won't be your own volition if you step foot outside this town. So it seems to be like it's somebody like almost like giving him permission to leave. And like after everything, it's just so it's just so powerful, isn't it? Like, <sighs> OK, next one. This is a view between villages extended, which I'm quite excited about because I'm wondering if like this version of this song is like maybe the version where he doesn't turn around. We'll see. It's funny listening to this song now because I know it so well, you know. Air in my lungs. Till the road begins And I'm splitting the road Down the middle Ugh, just love it <laughs> Seems so simple I am not scared of death I've got dreams again Got chills <laughs> I love this song <laughs> That's so sick. But I feel so far from it. I'm angry again. And everything's still. Okay, so where are we gonna go next? If it's just a slow outro for the whole thing. <laughs> well, I, for me personally, big enough for anything that I want. Wow. Mid girl. <laughs> <laughs> By 
I wonder who this is. Maybe the family. Well, I guess it's a small community. We for each other. Looking back at the town. <laughs> Oh my god! That's everything I needed from that song. That's everything I needed from that. It's fucking beautiful. <laughs> I'm sobbing. <laughs> oh my god. I remember thinking that the, the view in between village is like, was kind of short, you know? And it like, it gets to somewhere and then it goes down again and it's gone, you know? But like, that was like just exactly what it needed it just went to another level like the little clips of people talking about the hometown and like how you know they relate to their hometown like the closeness like looking back with the good view of it you know it's like maybe when he grows older he'll be able to look back with like nostalgia with happiness you know the things that we they did have you know yeah Oh my god. And maybe that last, like, you know, turning around again, maybe it's a, like an admittance that it doesn't matter where he goes, it doesn't matter where he lives, he still will return. He still has that kind of like connection, you know? So it's like that kind of development, you know? It's like, it doesn't matter how far I am, I will still be here, but not I will still be here. I'm stuck here. I will still be here because this is where I grew up. This is everything, you know, this made me. You know, it's just fucking incredibly poignant and just beautiful and like just blown away in every way. I just think it's so wonderful. It's, oh my God. I just, yeah, I can't even cope. I want to see what the last lyrics were. So this is the clip that it was like the the interviews. So for me personally, I found a town big enough for anything that I want. I mean, I'm not a city girl by any means. Stratford is still has a lot of meaning to me because I grew up there. It's a small community of people who really look out for each other. And that's the same way with anybody that needs anything. This community is there to help. And so like Noah can finally look at this place for what it is, like the kind of small town community, like closeness. God, it really does like reflect so much of like how I feel about my hometown, you know, and how as far as I, as long, as far as I travel, as though, as like, you know, like as far as I move away, like my family is still there. My friends are still there and they still care so much. The things I lost here, the people I knew, they got me surrounded for a mile or two, left at the graveyard. I'm driving past ghosts. The arms are extended. My eyes start to close. The cars in reverse. I'm gripping the wheel on back between villages and everything's still. <laughs> Uh, that for me like is like a moment of like peace you know maybe he will always be between villages because his home might be somewhere else but everything is still and it's okay you know okay I'm so excited to hear this like final brand new song that came out today this is forever let's drive for no reason let's grind down the curve of this earth Right down the curve of this earth. Honey, used to wish I meant anything to anywhere. This is really like looking back, isn't it? You know, this is properly the nostalgia moment. In the heat of July, and I'll tell her so. <laughs> and I'm broke, my head that broke. Won't ever let her go. <sighs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> looking at the future. We're looking at the future. <laughs> we can't make it. So we window shot. 
What a perfect, perfect, like, final extra song to be looking at the future, to be imagining the future, you know? Broke, but I'll be rich in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Feeling that. <laughs> Love the mixed tempo of this. Oh. I love that. I don't know why, but I do. Now I'm glad I get forever. See where you end. Just phenomenal. Like, what a beautiful progression. This whole thing, the whole experience, starting off the northern attitude this like please excuse me for where i grew up like i'm just a small town boy like i don't know any better and to go through like the journey of like struggling with the stick season you know which represents like the dead trees the winter of his hometown up in the north where it's barren wasteland that kind of feeling you know seeing like other people moving on and him being left behind like going to therapy, like still trying to get over somebody who is kind of left him behind. Everybody's left him behind. You feel so totally stuck. Towards the end of the album, he's starting to make moves. He's starting to be able to move past it. He's taking one foot out, but he does kind of turn back, but he's getting there, you know? And then with these bonus tracks to be able to take one step away and start looking at stuff from a different perspective. The relationships with friends like that he's, you know, now left behind. His relationship with his ex, who he still kind of has as the as the drunk, you know, number to call. The attitude, the wanting to move forward. One day I'll be able to get there, but I'm still thinking about it. I still can't quite get past like what we had, you know, what I had whilst I was here. Actually being in a place where he can look at somebody else struggling and give them help, you know, the strength in that. And then to understand that people are going to like support him to send him on his way. He's going to go far. He's going to have a great time and finally he can look back at his hometown with reverence and like look at the great stuff that it has you know the sense of community and even though it doesn't matter how far he'll be he'll still will have come from that small town he's proud of that you know like the progression there to get past that and then to look towards the future it's just perfect isn't it just absolutely perfect i'm just so moved by the whole thing i just think it's so good you were so right about these bonus tracks though they're so good <laughs> let's drive for no reason let's see where the these wheels land let's grind down the curve of this earth when we kissed in the car in the school parking lot i used to wish wish i meant anything to anywhere to anyone so he's like looking back at this like teenage romance this like you know who he was back then you know when forever was a sentence sentenced to death when you were running to as a drop of sweat and the edges of your soul i haven't seen yet now i'm glad i get to see forever where you end so this is the he's actually looking back at this relationship that he had and being able to like say i'm glad that we didn't actually get married be like te like teens getting married because we were two different people she was the the running tear and he was the drop of sweat that were to to so totally different people and now he's glad he gets to see forever when you know without this person he gets to experience a different life he's actually glad that they didn't stay together despite all of the shit that that he's been through with her you know i won't be alone for the rest of my life i'll build a boat for when the river gets high and i'll meet a girl in the heat of july and i'll tell her so she knows that i broke a bone that never healed in my hand so when i hold her close I I might loosen my grip, but I won't ever let her go. <laughs> this, yeah. Oh my God. Oh fuck. So she, he's singing to the ex, right? Saying it's okay. I might not have anybody yet, but I'm in a place where I can foresee that. Now I'm glad I get forever to see where you end, to see where you end. So actually now he gets to see this person thrive and go and do their thing and have a beautiful life. And he gets to experience that as a friend. Like, it's just such a maturity. Like, I just, the whole progression, it just is so astonishing to me to have, like, this one last bonus song that really is just, like, is seals the deal. It completely feels like it should have been there the whole time type thing, you know? It's so wonderful. God, okay. I'm going to take a little lunch break, but stick around and I will be reacting to all the duets, including the hosier one, which I'm very excited about. Right, okay. Here we go. I've had my lunch break. Got a coffee. So this is going to be a little bit of a little bit more of a speed round because obviously we have just heard some of these and I've dug into the lyrics and stuff in the previous reaction. So cool. Let's do it. <laughs> 
Is this Dal drunk with Post Malone? Mm. Ah. ah, I'm just obsessed. <laughs> I can understand why this one's been trending a lot. Like a lot of people, a lot of people have been playing this one. Ooh, okay. Cool. Turning a slow dance into a mosh pit. Nice. I love the way his melody kind of almost like interjects itself. Really cool. I'm not crazy about this like straight double layered chorus. Something about the mix of it that's like sending me off a little bit. I don't think I'm going to listen to this one over the original. I enjoyed Post Malone's verse. verse. But I think I just prefer Noah's like singular voice over this, you know? I do think it's very clever how he's done this though, because it's like put an album out, then do a deluxe version later on, then do all these duets as like a promotional thing. It's like a really good way of like seeing that your album's getting some traction and pushing it home. Yeah, great. Yeah, I like. I'm not crazy about the the guest verse like as much. I think it was good. I li- I, I I liked the performance of it and everything. It just doesn't gel. Like I just feel like like the solo version is fine. Do you know what I mean? But I do really appreciate yeah what he's been doing. Like he could obviously see he had something, and this has been like keep pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. And now we've got this forever version, and it feels like a kind of victory lap. You know. Okay, next one. This is Call Your Mum, but with Lizzie McAlpine. <laughs> Oh, you spy, but then again, plans. Cause I've all I turned off. Got his falsetto, and this is so beautiful. It's such a comforting energy, isn't it? It's like you're kind of whispering to this person, you know, to keep them safe, to keep them calm. Waiting room, no place to stand. Okay, so she's just doing a straight version of this verse. Her voice sounds nice here though. You'd have never tried it. Entire night till you had to go. I really like her performance of this. Like it's really light and soft, but she sounds so secure in her notes, you know, it's not like wavering. It feels quite strong, even though it's quite subtle, which I think is the idea of the song, you know, this idea that you can be strong for somebody else, but there's an intimacy, you know, vulnerability. I've been I like how they're singing in harmony here as well. Like I feel like this adds to the original version more than the Post Malone feature, you know. I think in the previous one it felt like Post Malone's verse was just stuck in and then he just sang in unison over the chorus whereas this one is them singing in harmony in the chorus so it just feels a little bit more well gelled and her voice really suits the style of the song as well. Yeah, I feel like that one's a bit more successful than the first one. I really enjoyed Lizzie's verse. I mean, it's, she did just perform the verse that was already written, but I really think that in her performance of it, she understood how to perform it in a way that suggested that she was strong, but the person that she's speaking to is vulnerable, so she uses a quiet voice, you know. I think that was really nicely pitched, really nicely. And I really like the way that they sing in harmony, because it just, I don't know, they both feel like they're singing from a place of, like, protectiveness, you know, for this other person and I just think yeah it's really nicely done okay let's go on to She Calls Me Back with Casey Musgraves oh there was heaven in your eyes she calls me back she calls me back this one's been on repeat for me <laughs> look at me and don't you I just really love the tension in this verse. It's so clever. Obsessive. Hanging on to every sentence. I'm still dying. I two two nine three three one six seven. <laughs> Everything's alright when she calls me back. She calls me back. Running out of tears to cry. Nice. Okay. 
Okay, so she's written her own verse. Maybe something's changing me. Okay, so she's singing the other perspective. Yeah, great. I love that she's like filling in the story from the other, from the person, you know, so clever. You still dial. Classic country vibe in this verse. Yeah, this, this duet really adds something to the song. I love this idea of a duet that shows two different sides of the story. It reminds me of somebody that I used to know by Gautier and Kimbra, where it's like an obsessive guy and then a girl being like, why are you obsessed with me? <laughs> have saved oh i was too afraid of living life in your footsteps living life in your footsteps i love this song <laughs> still she calls me so sick i mean i love that song I, that one's really been like a repeat play for me because it's just so satisfying to listen to and so satisfying to sing along because it's like right within my range like sits nicely within my range um <laughs> Yeah, love it. Really love how Casey adds an extra verse to that, where it's like the opposite perspective. Because obviously the song is like a guy obsessing over a girl, being like, everything's okay when she calls me back. He's hanging on for that that moment when she calls him back. And she's kind of saying, I don't know why I'm still calling you back. Like this character still has her foot in the past in a way as well. She's kind of stringing him along and she's not sure why. I'm running out of tears to cry. They're gone before they hit my cheeks. Maybe it's the air out here. Maybe something's changing me. So she's moving on. She is changing. If you think that you could wake me up, don't you know how well I sleep? You love me and I don't know why. I only call you once a week. She knows what the situation is and yet she's still kind of got one foot out of the door. But I love this idea that there's a version that exists that is like the original and then this version exists that's like her revealing what the other character in the song is actually thinking and feeling. Really clever really i mean of course it's casey musgraves she knows what she's doing um, yeah cool okay amazing now we have northern attitude with hosier which i know i've got hosier on the wall you know i know you all got me into hosier now i'm obsessed and i'm really excited to hear this i've been holding off on hearing this pretty much since it came out in like november because i saw it and was like oh and then i was like no this might be a reaction so <laughs> i've saved it so, yes, I'm excited to see what Hosier can bring to this song. Apparently, it's illegal to listen to the original version. So, okay, cool. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> and be prepared for me singing along to this one, too. <laughs> breathing in, breathing out, you're so done. I'm, st I'm so shit at lyrics. It doesn't matter how many times I listen to a song. <laughs> Two, three, four. Oh, I was out of time. <laughs> I love this song. If I get too close, forgive my northern attitude. Oh, I was raised down in the cold. It's such a good song. <laughs> I mean, I just, I love the heart. Okay, wait. But some shit, search online, Oh, Roll alone. Oh, hose, yeah. Build a boat, build a life, you lose your wife. But it just sounds so good on it. It just suits him so much, doesn't it? Like, I mean, you've got to have a big hosier note on there, haven't you? <laughs> oh. Harmonies are. Oh, so nice. Oh. Raised down in the cold till the summertime. Oh, the harmonies! Ah, I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> oh, God, it just sounds so fucking perfect. And this suits Hosea, like, the idea of this song. Oh, God, this version is so good. If you get too close, I was raised out in the cold. God, it's so nice to hear both her voices in harmony. Isn't that gorgeous? Gorgeous. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. That's what I want from a feature. Harmonies. Ah, <laughs> oh, fabulous. Oh my God, you're totally right. I'm not gonna listen to the original now. <laughs> it's so good. Oh God, just the ugh, just the harmonies in that chorus. The bits where Hosier does his vocalizing over the top. The thing is that like it adds like an extra dynamic to the song because like obviously the original, you have the quiet bit, you have the big bit, you have the second verse, you have the big bit, and then you have the end. This version is like quiet bit, 
big bit and then you have a different flavor and then you have an even bigger section than what we had in the previous song because you've got both their voices working together with the beautiful harmonies and full like beautifully like mixed vocals like that just give it so much texture it's just like oh beautiful and then they come together in that little bit a quiet bit at the end where they sing together beautiful love it perfect forgive my northern attitude oh i was raised on the line it's just so nice to sing like his songs are so nice to sing especially for me because like i feel like i have a similar range to noah khan <laughs> Anyway, the thing is with Hosier on this song, right, is that like a lot of Hosier's songs and storylines within his songs kind of relate to his culture, his home, his like slightly because of like the quirks of like his culture and his hometown, how they kind of translate into the into the world, you know. It fits so beautifully to have Hosier on this song because that's what Noah's singing about. He's singing about like, forgive my attitude, my small town attitude. Like I was raised on Little Light. I was raised in the middle of nowhere. I think that there's there's a real kind of kinship between both Hosier and Noah in that way. And obviously like Hosier's voice just is just so beautiful, but like raspy. It adds just an extra layer of of, of emotion to the feeling of the song, of the, the feeling of like feeling out of step, out like a little bit stuck, you know, he kind of adds weight to it, you know. Love it. I'm listening to that forever. Next song, Everywhere Everything with Gracie Abrams. Let's go. Ooh. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Would we survive in a horror movie? Intertwined in a car's dirty backseat. Whoa. Everywhere, everything Till our fingers decompose Actually, this would have been a really good one to have Hosier on as well. <laughs> you know, for the decomposition aspect. <laughs> I love the kind of subtle move into this the seventh chords again here. It's really, really nice. I don't really know Gracie Abrams, to be honest. Oh, hello. Maybe that ain't such a bad thing I'll tell you where not to speak Okay, this is nice. Her voice is nice. I like the harmony in it as well. I'm not sure, because obviously Noah belts that bit. It's very, very soft. I'm not sure necessarily works. It feels a little bit copy and pasted in. It worked with, um, in the Call Your Mum song with Lizzie McAlpine, because the whole thing was soft. But this has so much power to it, this song. Yeah, and not having Noah here is a mistake. I think. She doesn't have the power. I mean, it really shows, shows the strength of this album and Noah's songwriting that like, there are so many songs on here that you could do as duets and the artist would be happy to be on that song. Do you know what I mean? Like, to have like eight different songs from an album that are strong enough to hold like a duet on some albums, if, if, you, if you were the eighth person getting a duet and you've got like some like B-side, do you know what I mean? Then you'd be a bit miffed. But here's not the case. She sounds nice here. It's got a nice voice. It's just very soft and I don't think really suits the, the power of that midsection of the song. Because like, if you think about like the second verse, he's just gone up to that really powerful place and then for the energy to drop so much and then the energy of the second chorus to not match the energy of the first chorus just feels like a misstep. It doesn't feel like it's like designed that way. And so therefore I think it sounds a little bit copy and pasted, that one. That's my thought. She's got a lovely voice though. It just, I think it really would have suited like Come Over or Still or Halloween or Strawberry Wine. One of the really soft songs would have really suited her. Not everything every, everywhere because like that has so much power in it and she doesn't, uh, maybe she can, but she didn't do that here, you know? Okay, so we've got three songs left. We've got Homesick with Sam Fender. Let's go. Two months since you got back in a masochistic bullshit. <laughs> You. <laughs> I love the kind of like rocky. Oh, here we go. Oh yes, Sam. Okay. Yeah, his vibe really suits the song. Reason. Yeah, he really added that, added to that. Fits the dynamic dynamic of the song. 
nice addition, yeah. Can't make myself believe in I'm homesick. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, Sam really adds a good energy to this. The only thing I really know about Sam Fender is that his fans all wear the t-shirt of the beer that's from his hometown. <laughs> he did a gig up the road from me and I couldn't get a bus anywhere. It was really annoying. <laughs> Sick. Yeah, great. Sam really added to that song. His style already suits the, the song totally, like that kind of slightly rockier edge. He has that kind of voice. He has that kind of style. The vocal processing on his voice really fits into that classic uh, plate reverb rock style. Yeah, really added to it. And it felt like, he felt like a natural part of that song. It didn't feel like tacked on in any way. It felt like he'd always been there. Well, I grew up in the fallout from the riots in the 90s, static cranes stand lifeless, casting shadows on the town. Oh, okay, so this is like, so he grew up in Newcastle, and for context, I'm assuming this is referring to the closure of the mines and Teesside Steel. My <laughs> my boyfriend comes from the same area, and the manufacturing and the, and the mines and everything that were situated in that part of the country got all shut down by Margaret Thatcher. And so I think... That's what he's referring to. I stare at the hallowed ocean as if to pick a fight for the dreams my old man dreamt for me lay on the other side. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, my God. I would leave if only I could find a reason. I mean, because I grew up in New England. Clever. Newcastle, obviously, but also New England, like the New England. England used to be a manufacturing country and now our biggest export is insurance things changed. That's very, very clever and very savvy. And I love this idea of him relating his homesick to the depression of the 90s and how he grew up and how actually his dad's dream for him lay out his outside of the, of the town. He's like, there's nothing here for you. You need to move away. That is just really, really good. Isn't that really good? So good. I love that. That's like, he really added to that. Sick. Amazing. That and Hosier have been the best ones, like totally. But now we've got Brandy Carlisle and I love Brandy Carlisle and I just cried to this song. So <laughs> here we go again. Oh, that was so good though. I'm going to have to send that to my boyfriend because he's going to really appreciate that. Okay, next one is You're Gonna Go Far with Brandy Carlisle. Let's go. Only time I got to praying for her in life It's just good to land Or at least it was spray paint And I even gave up the fucking episode Yes, oh, Brandy's voice it makes Ooh, you'll be far You'll be far Just pack up your car Put a hand in your heart You're the greatest thing we've lost The birds are still singing I can't help it. <laughs> we'll all be here forever. It's kind of lovely hearing the female voice there as well, because it seems like a mum and a dad saying goodbye to their child, you know? <laughs> I like to text my boyfriend at the break and he was like, stay hydrated. <laughs> Oh, she sounds so good, doesn't she? Oh. If you step foot out of this town, so pack up your car, put a hand in your heart. Greatest thing we belong. I can't hear that like without getting me every time. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. I love her little harmonies that she's putting into this. She's weaving so much beauty into this song by adding her voice to his. It's not like dumping it in. She's really understanding the song and intertwining herself into it, you know? Oh, oh my God, Brandy Carlisle. Her voice is just fucking insane to me. I love it so much. Oh, so good. I really love how this duet thing isn't just, you know, a cash grab or anything. It feels like they've put artistic thought into every single one. Well, not every single one. 
to most of them. <laughs> you know, the guests have come on and added not only elements of performance, but they've weaved their voice in with his. They've brought a different element of the story. They've related their own story to his within the song and brought that to it. It's like really just like specifically like at the moment, she calls me back, Northern Attitude, Homesick, and You're Gonna Go Far. Just beautiful versions that I'm going to be listening to instead of the original. Let's go on to the last one. This is Paul Revere with Gregory Allen Isakoff. I've never heard of this guy. This is the only person I haven't heard of in terms of the duets. Um, let's do it. County line, I'm counting down. Yeah, the boys are drunk, the sun is high. Okay, yeah. License place, live free or die. The country guy, presumably. To New Year's, then they'll leave me to the leader. It muddles there, strange. Ooh, lovely harmonies. Paul Revere and when they ask me not from around here. For those joggers looking way too proud. Until it ends and I'm not ready to let go yet. love this big chorus vocal again this singer has really just brought themselves into the song in a really natural way adds a bit of a bit of a country twang but like it sits really nicely you know but i'm in my car and i see the hour where we bury the dog If I could leave, I would've already left. But I'm in the world made sense. I'm a chain link fence. I would've already left. Yeah, this guy really fit the mood of the song and added like a kind of gravelly feel to it. Really nice. Yeah, really nicely done. I like that guy's voice, really nice. He really just added to the kind of the, the depth within the song feels like that could have been the original again. Yeah, these have been really successful more than they haven't been, to be honest. Like in terms of my playlist, yeah, Paul Revere, You're Gonna Go Far, Homesick, Northern Attitude, and She Calls Me Back will be replacing the originals. I really just love what the artists have brought to it. They've brought their own side of the story as well as bringing their voice and their artistic kind of nuance to the vocal side as well. Just overall, just what an incredibly stunning project. I think it speaks to like, have, especially with all these duets, I think Noah's writing really speaks to the kind of universal nature of our relationship, our generation and our relationship to our hometown. You know, it's something that I've thought about loads over the last few years, like having done a lot of traveling, having them returned home during the pandemic and then moved out again. It's something that's really been going around in my head, like my relationship to home and the way that it's changed. And I think Noah's songwriting is clearly just so universal. The way that he can tap into that feeling, tell these stories that not only from his perspective, but also kind of seem to be referring to other people in his kind of friendship group. You can see yourself in him. You can see yourself in his friends. You can see your friends in his friends. And it just makes it this experience that just brings you along and clearly it does to everybody because a he's finding loads of popularity and b all of these songwriters could also find their own stories to relate like the sam fender one like amazing like for him to relate to his story the other side of the world you know and still have that same feeling of that homesick you know um and to bring that to the song it clearly is no no is connecting to people in a special way and it is so exciting i just adore this entire project i just think it's absolutely wonderful and um i have to say thank you to my boyfriend for telling me to react to it because other people have got had a lot of views on their no car videos and now i've discovered it and i'm like yes it's so good say thank you to my boyfriend in the comments thank you for watching thank you for coming along this journey with me it's been absolutely wonderful i can't wait to see what he's gonna do now like Oh, remember to leave your top five from the entire project. That's every single bonus track, every single duet, every single normal track. I want to know what your top five is. Let me know in the comments. Oh, my favorite song. I think I might have to give it to, I'm going to give it to Your Needs, My Needs. That song just blew me away. I just thought it was absolutely incredible. The story of it, I just really connected to. It's so real and so surprising, like every section of it, like it really kind of just took me along and just didn't let me go. And it was just the most moving thing. If you want to check out my reaction to a bunch of Bo... Bozier. <laughs> 
If you want to check out my reaction to a bunch of Hosier's alternative bonus songs, then you can watch that video here. If you want to check out my reaction to Tate McRae's Think Later, it is here.